Now, I don't know how many more UN awards you can pin to yourself to say that you're a sellout, but I think Megan Davis has got the number one position, and if you want it, you're going to have to get more than her. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today's the 2nd of October, 2023. I thought I'd make this video. Um, it's to do with a few connections that I've made, and it's one with the Australian Judicial Officers Association, where they had a media release um, on the 30th of August, and... On that media release, it's uh, titled um, Statement Referencing Stratford versus Judge Vasta. Now, why this is why this case is important is because um, I'll just read out the little passage that says it's not much, but um, it says the Australian Judicial Officers Association (AJOA). This is on the 30th of August. 2023, so I knew, what was that, four weeks ago. Uh, the Australian Judicial Officers Association notes that the judgment in the matter of Stratford versus Judge Vasta, 2023 Federal Court of Australia 1020, was published today by the Federal Court of Australia. The AJOA does not wish to make any comment about the merit of the judgment, but acknowledges that it may have potentially profound implications for certain members of the association so it's a judicial officers association so any judicial officers um, and it goes on to say the Australian uh, Judicial Officers Association is carefully considering any implication for its members and in that respect reviewing which Australian courts if any may not afford immunity to judicial officers so what that means is that they're effectively operating without insurance. Now, it's like a tradie not being allowed to operate on a government work site because he doesn't have public liability insurance, right? You have to insure everyone there and make sure everyone's sort of safe. Everyone's safe around you. So in an essence, in a simple way, that's what it is. The judicial officers, by some reasoning, aren't being covered by the insurance. Now, I've got reasons to suspect it's because they're governing under admiralty jurisdiction or through courts of admiralty jurisdiction, which is going against a lot of common law rights and um, just it's been done away with our rights and people are starting to wake up to those rights that have been done away with seeing it that it's a one-sided affair and um and not having it so that's why there's a lot of self-representing litigants that's why you'll see a lot of media propaganda um labeling these people as as sovereign citizens so that when one of these people come up and try and tell you their story you're going to instantly think that they're a sovereign citizen and that their um legitimate argument is illegitimate because you are subject to the conditioning so let me go on to say now you would think Given that Dr. William Bay, um, the process that he's gone through, it went to one judge. The one judge is allowed to go, is allowed to send that back, um, sort of not um, grant what he wanted. But that is a system they use to weed out, um, sort of what is it, the wheat from the chaff? I think the saying is. And then what happens is that the people then you go back apply for a form 31 and then you can resubmit to the high court and then you get three judges to determine on that question and that's the point where dr william bay's at now i think in preparing that now you would think that being the um today's the second tomorrow's the third of october and the referendum is on the 14th and there's some serious constitutional issues being asked that you would think that our Chief Justice, which is the head of all the justices of the High Court, who determine on the really important constitutional issues and questions, you would think she would hang around. But no, she's off to Auckland. And what do you mean she's off to Auckland, Johnny? Well, I've sort of done a bit of digging to see what's going on. And according to and now this was released last year as the program so this could have changed so if someone wants to double check it go ahead 
But there's a few points I want to make out of this. The, the keynote speaker is uh, Susan Keffel, K-I-E-F-L-F-E-L. So it's K-I-E-F-E-L, Susan Keefel, AC. She's the Chief Justice of Australia. So she's speaking there. You also have Deborah Mortimer, Chief Justice of Federal Court of Australia, speaking there. And what I found interesting was, if you go down a little bit further, that Professor Megan Davies from the University of New South Wales. Now that name stood out to me and I thought, why is it that I know that name? And at the beginning I had it confused with Dorinda Cox when I saw her photo, but it was actually that Megan, Cox, uh, Megan Davies is a professor. Now, when I was at university, so the last year, the year before, one of the assignments that I did, one of the questions was posed by Professor Megan Davis, and it was on um, the state of affairs of Indigenous peoples in our country. Um, I got a distinction for that assignment too. But when I sort of read into, and I did know back then that Megan was actually part of um, and had some ties in with the original 10 Embassy in Canberra. So she's been an advocate for a long time, but what's interesting is it seems like um, Megan Davies has been corrupted. She's not working for us. I'll give you the hot tip. Let me read out her resume. Professor Megan Davies is a pro vice chancellor Indigenous UN New South Wales, so the University of New South Wales, and a professor of law at Uni, um, the University of New South Wales Law. Professor Davis was elected by the UN Human Rights Council to UN MRIP in 2017. Professor Davis currently serves as the United Nations expert with the United Nations Human Rights Council's <coughs> expert mechanism on the rights of Indigenous peoples based in UN Geneva. And Professor Davis has recently been appointed Balnaf's Chair for Constitutional Law. Megan is an acting commissioner of the New South Wales Land and Environment Court. Professor Davis is a fellow of the Australian Academy of Law and a fellow of the Australian Academy of Social Sciences. She's a member of the New South Wales Sentencing Council and an, and an Australian Rugby League Commissioner. She gets around a bit, doesn't she? Professor Davis is, was director of the Indigenous Law Centre, Uni New South Wales Law Reform between 2006 and 2016. Professor Davis is a formerly a chair and expert of the United Nations Permanent Forum of Indigenous Issues, 2011 to 2016. As UNPFII expert, she was the focal point for UN women and UN AIDS. During this per period of UN service, Megan was a rapporteur of the UN EGM on the optional protocol to the UN, UN DRIP in 2015. The rapporteur of the UN EGM on combating violence against Indigenous women and, ch and girls in 2011, and the UN rapporteur for the international EGM on Indigenous youth in 2012. Now she's been at it for over 10 years, and all those statistics are still going up. None of them will come down. So nothing she's done has worked. Nothing she's sort of colluded with the UN has worked. Seems like a bit of a lot of hot air and a lot of money getting thrown her way. And um, at the end of the day, if these are the people who are <coughs> being you know, put into the Yes campaign and, uh, and who are um, advising the Yes campaign and, and um, Prime Minister Albanese and all the rest of them, um, you can see why we're being led astray <coughs> or even why um, <coughs> the, the Yes vote has been led astray and, and didn't do things the right way um, because Australians do want to, uh, you know, treat it with the, with the Indigenous people <coughs> to make sure that it's done right, though, not being corrupt way. You know, they want to see change. We want to help them see the change too, but not, not in this way, because there hasn't been no change. It's all got worse. And um, I'll just continue on. Yeah, okay. Megan has extensive experience as an international lawyer at the UN and participating in the drafting of UN, UN, um, UN DRIP from 1999 to 2004. Okay, so 1999 to 2004. And then we get, in 2004, Julia Gillard passed the bill in Western Australia that removed the Crown from the Act and replaced it with the word state. And that was in 2004. 
And that's all Braun Shaw's work. Acts and Amendments, the Legal Practices Act, 2004. Unbelievable. And he's a former, so she was at, worked at UniDrip, and they're the ones that worked on Indigenous reconciliation stuff. So, and he's a former UN Fellow of the UN Office of the High Commissioner for, the, for Human Rights in Geneva. Professor Davies is a constitutional lawyer who researches in public law and public international law. Her current research focuses on constitutional design, democratic theory, and Indigenous peoples. Professor Davies has been the leading constitutional lawyer working on Indigenous constitutional reform since 2011. Has been the leading constitutional lawyer working on Indigenous constitutional reform since 2011. 12 years she's been at it. In 2015, she was appointed by the Prime Minister to the Referendum Council and designed the deliberative consultation dialogue process the council undertook. So she's the one that's supposed to go in the country speak to her, but she never did. In 2011, how could she when she's overseas in Geneva and you know flying all around the place doing a UN delegate? In 2015, she was appointed, no, in 2011, Megan was also appointed by the Prime Minister's expert panel on the recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the constitution and continues to be involved in the legal discussions on the constitutional issues relating to the referendum model. You think we found who the person is driving all of this behind the scenes in a big, big way? Professor Davis was named in the 2017 Australian Financial Annual Power List and was awarded the overall winner in 2018's Women of Influence. She was ranked number seven on the Cultural Power List for her work on constitutional reform and delivering the Uluru Statement from the Heart. Now, we've got videos of people from Alice Spring, the Penanjanara, that said they don't want that word being used. And there's this woman, Megan Davies, who's supposed to be representing all Australian Indigenous, the speaking forum, in all these different forums. And she's got the disrespect to go against the people's wishes of that mob to say, do not use that word anymore, please. It's sacred, it's part of the sacred land there. Stop using it. Disrespectful, not according to protocol at all. Professor Davies has also been the 2010 NIDOC, NIDOC Scholar of the Year, one of Australia's Financial Review, and Westpac's 100 Women of Influence in Australia in 2013 and 2016. So, Megan Davis was one of Australia's Financial Review and Westpac's 100 Women of Influence in Australia in 2013 and 2016. National Australia Bank Women's Agenda Inspirational Ambassador Award in 2013. So not only is she tied up with the UN, she's also tied up with the banks who are controlled by who other than Yes, they were, you guessed it. Yeah, she's also got the University of Queensland Alumni Award for services to the UN and constitutional reform in 2014. She's also got the 58th E.S. Myers Memorial Medal in 2015, the Dushne, Dushnes College, University of Queensland ACORN Award in 2015, and last but not least, the United Nations Association of Australia Queensland UN Award in 2017. Now, I don't know how many more UN awards you can pin to yourself to say that you're a sellout, but I think Megan Davis has got the number one position, and if you want it, you're going to have to get more than her. Now, tied up completely with the UN. Tied up completely with the backroom deals of trying to change the constitution in the wrong way, not according to their own protocol, um, 
and and doing it in a really dodgy manner behind all of Australians eyes okay through parliaments and through all these positions through universities um, and then on top of all of that I find that she's one of the keynote speakers at the Australian Judicial Officers Association now we've got serious issues of fraud coming out of the NIAA which Dorinda Cox and I'd say Megan Davis has been instrumental in probably setting it all that up if you look at the timelines this woman's injected into the UN the universities and the judicial system now if that's not a foreign operative or someone who's been bought I don't know who is. She, this woman has not got um, Australia in her heart to be first and foremost. She's taken directions. She's been taking money. You go in there, you see the grants over the course of 10 years. I don't know how many. She's nearly a million dollars worth of grants. Plus all the other wages she's got. This woman does not do it dusty. She's been put on a pedestal, as all those awards, so it's award after award, just throwing them at her. And um, yes, she's educated. Um, yes, she's done a lot. But um, when you look at, she's also connected in that um, little passage here where you see, let me have a look. Okay, so ARC, Discovery Indigenous, 2013 to 16, Dr. Kylie Cripps, Professor Megan Davis and Associate Professor Anne Cosins got $230,000. The role of cultural factors in the sentencing of Indigenous sex offenders in the Northern Territory. Anything changed? No, it's got worse. New South Wales, uh, University of New South Wales Major Research Equipment and Infrastructure Initiative 2015-16. Megan Davis, $97,672. The Australian Indigenous Law Library. Okay, don't know what that is. What happened there? Anne Rose Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Grant Round. 2017, Professor, Professor Marcia Langton, Professor Megan Davies, and Dr. Kristen Smith, $199,415 for improving family violence, legal and support services for Indigenous women. Now, I'll take you back to Jacinta Price's public, uh, the National press gallery speech and of the women that she spoke that she brought in there that there was that they were outspoken to begin with and that their voice had never been heard now it begs the question that you know 2017 so this is like six years ago professor marcia langdon professor megan davis and dr Kristen smith were given nearly two just shy of two hundred thousand dollars to improving family violence legal and support service for indigenous women now this woman couldn't get any help there is countless people that can't get any help so where did, where did that money go now if you can't see that marcia langton megan davis dorinda cox uh, thomas mayo i mean the list goes on they're corrupt corrupt as they come ladies and gentlemen and if you can't see the forest from the trees you're going to be living on your knees.